Testing, testing. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hopefully I have the comments enabled. I don't do this very often, so... Uh... Richard have announced also that he's going to stream, so I was doing this uh, to make sure it got streamed, so if he runs a better stream and he can... Yeah? Awesome. And then, uh, yeah, I'll continue streaming and... Uh, live in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just fun, it's just like... 
life and then uh, this is what uh, makes my interest now. So, uh, it's always the most fun to create content from what you're most interested in. Yeah. So, it's now 1820. It hasn't gone live automatically. So sure. Yeah, so we should go live, right? All because right. we said. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go live. Okay. I'll double check. You live here? You live in the You also I'm want to what? Front. So, uh, where questions will be, height, and then if you do not want to be filmed, stay to one of the sides. So, uh, and if you I ask start the stream too. What? I will start the stream too. Yes, yeah. see already. Yeah, I said it was like that. Wrong, can we go I'm in for no. So, I wasn't sleeping at all. So, all of a sudden, I wake up and I was going to miss the hex and I thought we didn't even support it. So, I was like, okay, when he launches the product, what am I going to do? And then life just passed. People are noticing the bag. Then I got into it. And then that's how we learn. Yeah. And then I got my second child around the time of the sacrifice. Really? So I was so pissed, but like, I need to remember the sacrifice this time, right? So I sacrificed four days before that. And that was basically where I had my second girl. So which was more important? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you can hear me, clap once. There we go. All right, welcome, Hexagon. Some of us can't count because we clap more than once, but I love you and appreciate you. My name's Grant, and uh, on behalf of the highest of stakes, uh, I appreciate your attendance here tonight. Uh, I am one of the co-directors of the documentary that is being made about Hex, the Hex community, and Richard Hart. And it is our great pleasure to be a part of what is a natural process of Richard's MO. And that is, as he's touring Europe right now, he's engaging and hosting meetups throughout the different nations. And um, yeah, as fate would have it, uh, Copenhagen is the destination for this evening. So we appreciate your participation, excited that you're here, and um, want to acknowledge that we are here as well. Uh, which comes with it a little bit more of an additional formality around the way that some of the things are going to be handled tonight. Okay, so um, Richard's going to join us here momentarily. Um, when he does, share your natural excitement. <laughs> right? <laughs> share your natural excitement. Uh, we welcome those who have a difficult view at that moment to join in, you know, the larger room. And then, you know, once he's taken the stage and everything is set, you just kind of get settled in and enjoy listening to him share his thoughts and feelings tonight. Um, I'm sure that some of us in the room have come with questions, uh, some things that they'd love to, to hear the man answer himself. Um, and so we have created uh, an opportunity for you to do that, okay? So when the time is right, and we'll know it's right because Richard will say it is, um, then what we're gonna invite you to do is to form a queue right here and you're going to stand here and ask your question, okay? Richard will give you what is unquestionably going to be a fantastic answer. <laughs> um, and then once he's provided that fantastic answer, and it is no longer your turn, you're going to step out of line here, and you're going to continue around this post where our incredible producer, Maggie, will be searching for your autograph. 
because as a means of participating in the documentary, you have to give us permission to participate, okay? And so if you've asked a fantastic question, it's likely it could make it in the film. <laughs> it might longer be the question that you ask, right? So whether you ask a fantastic question or not, but truly just engage, and when you're finished, if you do us the favor of coming around and signing that document, giving us permission, that would be great. In full acknowledgement of that, that means then that if you were not wishing to be well, featured in the documentary, we understand and appreciate that. If you can find yourself in one of these pockets throughout the evening as you participate, it'll be easiest to not include you in the film, right? So if you're asking questions, um, then, then sign a waiver. And if you really, for whatever reason, OPSEC or otherwise, are like, listen, I want to like hide out. That Those are the pockets where it's very unlipely that you'll be highlighted in the film. Cool, copacetic? Good? Yeah. Feeling excited? Yeah. yeah. As are we as are we reading questions? Bueller, Bueller, <laughs> okay. 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 awesome, fantastic, yep. just like, yep, great. Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yeah, people are getting. <laughs> That's what happens when you start and early, right? I mean, it's what the boss said, right? Yeah. What are you complaining about? The angle of the camera? Yeah. Yeah, because they just see the mouth. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the, it mm -hmm. looks like the Muppet set. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no, here we go. legendary yeah. crypto founder of Hex and Bolster, Richard crossover. Who here is from really far away? Do we have anyone that came from like a really long distance? Where'd you come from? Los Angeles. Wow, that's, that's a long swim. Anybody else from really far away out there? Benjamin Jink says hello. Pleasure. Thanks, Benjamin. It's so nice to see all you guys. I was just looking at the price charts today and it was only 29 days ago, 30 days ago, that we had our all-time high. A million percent, 10,000 X. 55 and a half cents, you really can't beat it. Now we just uh, had a 50% uh, rise after a dip down to 22. Anybody buy the dip? Any yes. dip buyers? <laughs> yeah. It's funny, people that are selling, they love it when the price is high, but people that are buying, they love it when the price is low. And really, everybody gets a little bit of something they want. And if you're in it for the long term, every single dip we've ever had in Hex has been an opportunity historically. So, uh, you know, I don't know why that trend would stop anytime soon. We're so new. 
I think there's only 60,000, 67,000 active stakes right now. And I have a feeling that in a year, two years, three years, there's going to be a lot more than 67,000 active stakes because it's truly something world changing and innovative. And we're so lucky to have had it gate capped and suppressed the price so that we could get in at good entries, pretty much. Pretty much. I'm going to turn on my funny bank here. I don't know if you guys saw this, but you could actually program this to have hex colors. I don't think it's a good investment of $22,000, but if you don't have anything better to do with your money, I guess uh, you, could, you could have one of these. But it wasn't Power programmed button. yesterday yet, right? It wasn't what? It wasn't programmed yesterday. Well, yeah, I don't like installing apps on my phone, so I just kind of would have to get a standalone device just to control this thing. But it has its own built-in kind of like default color changing thing, so it's okay. How's the recording going? Go live on. stream's going. Yeah. We got two live streams now. We're streaming on my channel. Our angles suck, so the documentary guys could get better shots. And then we got Thank you. Live stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So Pulse is going good. I don't know if you guys have done any transactions on the test net yet, but uh, you know Absolutely. we've been monitoring, mm -hmm. and we see there are people that are like starting stakes and ending stakes, and they're doing it with their own front end because I've never tried it yet. I don't, I don't know a front end that works for it yet. So people really are developing their own ways to interact with it, which is awesome because unlike Hex, Pulse kind of grows more on network effect because the more projects that use it as their base layer, you know, the more people will want to purchase it to you know, create liquidity for liquidity pools, things like that. You know, with Hex, if nobody builds on it, we don't care. That's fine. It works great. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't need people to build layer two things. There's some people that have already built layer two things, like encapsulated stakes. X is kind of interesting in that the time value of money, the higher the velocity of money, the more it turns over, actually the less valuable the money is because it's easier to get somebody else's because it's moving around so quickly. Part of the reason why Hex appreciates as much as it does is because we reduce the velocity to zero by locking it and staking it. And so you've reached this dilemma, which is if you create a layer two system where a giant stake is created, the giant 15 year stake, and then people can purchase shares in that stake, is that virtual supply that is created? And does it therefore increase the velocity and, and then decrease the demand? And I would have thought originally yes. And so I wouldn't have, wouldn't have originally wanted to have seen people build layer two encapsulated stakes and then issuing shares of hex stakes on other chains or on other networks. Then I switched my, my mind on it, and I'll tell you why. You know, the Grayscale Trust is the same thing. It's encapsulated Bitcoin ownership. So the Grayscale Trust uh, raises money through private placement memorandums for private investors. They use that money to purchase Bitcoin. And then those people that uh, invested in the private placement, they don't have any right to redemption. They can't actually turn those shares back into Bitcoin. The only thing they can do is after they wait uh, six months, resell those shares on the open market, OTC, QADs, et cetera. And historically, there's been about a 20% premium. Recently, there's been a discount. So if you think about it from that perspective, the Grayscale's Trust just buys Bitcoin and never sells it. How could that possibly be bad for price? I mean, that seems like the most beautiful, glorious thing you could ever have for price. And from that perspective, encapsulated uh, hex shares would be the same thing. So a 15-year uh, you know, stake gets created and people are buying shares in it. Well, it's going to be 15 years till you're going to see those hacks on, on the, the main chain again. So I'm actually bullish on encapsulated stakes and encapsulated hex shares and other networks. And the code's already done for it. It's open source. You could, you could deploy it on another chain if you wanted to go through the work of doing it. I haven't had time. You know, we've also got a, a wallet, a hex wallet that's done. I haven't had time to release it. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff kind of going on in the ecosystem that people don't know about because you might not be devs or, you know, you might not be biz dev guys. Uh, it's just funny, like, and without, without any of those things, with full and total gatekeeping, no proper rank in CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, uh, everyone saying bad things, you know, very rarely a kind word said, we did 10,000 X in 623 days with 100% uptime. Well, everything, arose, everything else around us had problems and failures. Bitcoin has had the inflation bugs twice. One was executed, they had rolled back the chain. One, uh, a Bitcoin Cash developer caught in response to its closed before just minting as many free Bitcoin as you wanted. I don't know about you guys, but if you found a Bitcoin bug that allowed you to mint as many free Bitcoin as you wanted, eh, maybe mint a couple before you to tell the devs. I don't know. Because yeah. uh, I don't even think you're breaking the law. I mean, if the code is law and the code lets you mint coins, the code let you mint coins. What's the problem? Uh, you know? So it's, uh, it's very interesting. 
I don't know what Hex could do to win much harder. I guess it'll be nice we'll be able to on-ramp users through Pulse Chain with no fees. I don't know if you guys are happy with the Ethereum fees or not. Does anyone wish Ethereum fees were lower? Yeah. <laughs> they sucked. I mean, they're terrible. It, we used to pay pennies to start and end stakes or transfer uh, Ethereum or Hex. Now it's $50, $30. At least. I mean, it's to, to pay $25 or $30 to do a transfer is not good. And the only way to cure that, the only way to solve that is to build more supply, to build more capacity. Playing games with the bidding structure and it doesn't, it doesn't add capacity. And the only way you're going to reduce that price is to improve the supply or decrease the demand. And decreasing demand, I don't think anyone... Go, go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. I'll, I'll try harder. <laughs> sorry about that, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a long room. So, I was just saying Ethereum fees suck. <laughs> Hex good, pulse good. Yeah. Hex good, pulse good, E fee too high. It's about a 10,000 X. It's like the highlights. Um, so there's some guys here shooting a documentary, which may get picked up by you know a big network, which would be cool. And I think that that would allow us to have a larger impact in the world, because it looks like from the looks on your guys' faces that you've had a good time with X. Is anyone here happy with X? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, and remind, and this is after a dip, right? So it went from 55 to 22. Now I think it's 31. And this is one of the funny things. We had a, we had a, uh, like a big payday celebration. <laughs> and during the big payday celebration, the price was getting axe murdered, you know? Because everyone got 30% extra coin on the day just for being staked one day. And some people sold those coins. But you don't see that on the price chart. You don't see that everyone got 30% more coins minimum for being staked a day. You just see the price dip. That's why I like the share price chart. Because the share price chart shows you the appreciation that you got from interest as well as the price appreciation. And they both matter. I mean, I, I think a, a lot of people stake their hacks. You guys got any questions out there? Because I'm here to answer questions if you got them. We got a mic right here. We're just going to take, if you guys, anybody wants to line up if they've got a question. I'll ask a quick first one, Richard. Go, you got to go to the mic You're gonna go so they can point the camera at you. Yeah. Richard, okay, I'll do this officially. All right. Richard, how do I get my wife to care about this? Well, <laughs> just buy her something nice with your gains, pretty much. Yeah. And just be like, this came from these gains. That's what she's hoping for, just in case. Yeah, few pretty years. much. I mean, girls, for some reason, girls don't care as much about sports and crypto and cars and guns as guys do. She cares. She's the outlier. It happens. I mean, look, I look at my stats on YouTube and it's 95% guys. And it's not like because I'm trying for that, right? I just make videos and people watch them. And for some reason, 95% of the people who watch my stuff is guys. I am going to try and do outreach to girls because I like girls. And hey, wouldn't it be nice to have some more females in the room? It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. You know, that's, they're the future. They make the new kids and such. So they're, they're good to have on board. Yeah, um, we got a lot of opportunity out there. We, I mean, when's the last time you saw an Asian hexagon? It's very few. But it's a huge part of the world with but we all see millions Hex of people. Hex Asians. Right? So, like, yeah. I, I think that we're so very early, but not many people understand how early we are. Like, we are very, very early. I was in Bitcoin in 2011, back when everyone was calling Bitcoin a scam. Some people haven't figured out it's not a scam yet. It may be old, it may be expensive, the price performance may be poor, but it's still a lot better than the stock market in general. Not bad. It's still self-custodial. You still can control your own money. You can still mint your own rewards if you're a miner and pay a fee to some weird company in the middle of nowhere and pay the electric company a lot. Okay, maybe the mining part of Bitcoin's not that good. But the self custodying your own coins is very nice. You know, Sometimes you go to an exchange and you try and get your money out and they say no. Well, that's no good. That's not why anybody's in crypto. And that's the beautiful thing about Hex is you'll always be able to mint your own rewards. You never have to beg anyone or plead or pray to somebody else to give you your own money. I've had that experience at banks and it's disgusting. You, know, you go to send a wire and they just say no. Like, so you can't send wires here? So you guys are with parents? Like, you to choose where the wires can go? I, I haven't had that particular problem, but I've heard of people who have tried to buy crypto and just been told no outright. Like, in the UK, apparently, like, Barclays Bank is like, no, you, you cannot buy crypto. We don't allow it. Well, that's weird. Whose money is it? <laughs> is it my money or is it your money? If it's my money, let me do what I want, you know? Um, any other questions out there? Well, we got some questions. 
Don't be shy. This is a well-educated we audience. Come on up here. That's the problem. They already know all the answers. They've watched all the streams. <laughs> Hello, my name is Fabiola, and I'm using Twitter like for 10 years. Nice. And I use the internet every day. Why haven't I heard about Hex before today? All right. Well, that's a great question. That is a great question. I spend most of my waking time shilling on Twitter as hard as I can, so definitely not my fault. It's, uh, I think, well, I'll, I'll tell you a tangential answer, which might help you. There are people that, as a mission, try to starve people of the information that Hex exists. They consider Hex a threat to their livelihood. So, for instance, if you're a, a YouTube personality and you make your money on people getting wrecked trading, buy, sell, buy, sell, get chopped up by fees, get chopped up by commissions. That's where they make their money. They need you to lose money and hop in and out of positions over and over again so that they make fees. Well, in Hex, when you buy your Hex and you lock up your coins, you're not getting chopped up by fees. You're not getting liquidated when the price moves against you. And therefore, you're not making any of these influencers any money on the referral links. And so uh, margin trading houses aren't going to make money with Hex unless people decide to margin trade it, which I would suggest people don't do. But if you want to get wrecked, get wrecked here. If you want to get liquidated and learn why shorting is a bad idea, I'd rather you get liquidated trying to short hex, and then the hex price goes up when you have to cover your position, and, and you end up buying higher than you thought possible. I mean, even Bitcoin just made a new all-time high today, which is funny, because usually when it pops out of its parabola, it drops 85%. This time, it just dropped 55%. But now if the chart's going to start doing things it doesn't normally do, well, that opens up the chance for a double top, too. So if it's, if it's not going to bottom like it normally does, it means it doesn't have to top like it normally does either. So it's, just, it's better for everybody if the chart just kind of keeps doing the same stuff it normally does because it lets you predict the future to a degree. And so now with Bitcoin doing stuff that it doesn't normally do, it's, it's just harder to predict like what the future might look like. So it might just stop going up at some point. You'd be like, yeah, I don't know why I did that because it's not acting like it used to do. So back to the, the awareness. So YouTube influencers, will, YouTube influencers will never see anything nice about hack because they can't make money on it because there's no margin trading for it. It's the opposite of margin trading. It lets the users keep all that profit instead of the exchange making a profit and the referrals and the, the referrers making a profit, or affiliates, as you call them. And then, you know, exchanges themselves, they want you to get in and out of positions too. You know, when you go on Twitter, you see advertisements for crypto.com, eToro.com, advertising Dogecoin, SHIB, all of these fake coins with no technical innovation whatsoever. Their primary claim to fame is their logo. And why are they advertising these things? Because they want you to get chopped up by fees. They want you to get in, they want you to get out, they want you to do copy trading, they want you to do whatever crap they can to move your money out of your pocket into their pocket. And it's hilarious, at the top of eToro.com it says 61% or 67% of their users lose money with them, and no one has a problem with that. They can buy ads anywhere they want. They got ads on cars and on sports teams, and you're like, you guys realize they're victimizing people. The vast majority of people that use this service lose money, and that's even hiding some data because the amount that the losers lose is so much larger than the amount that the few winners win. So it's not just a question of the count of the people, but of the quantity of the money as well. And so those guys don't want to hear about Hex. I mean, I know that eToro has actually worked to have Hex ads disallowed in some places where some of their ads were. Why? Because it's a threat to their business. They're when, hex, when hexagons are saved from trading and from liquidations by the good design, the good game theory, those guys lose money. They can't victimize the users anymore, so they're, they, they treat hex as adversarial because we're trying to help the people and they're trying to hurt the people. They literally at the top of their website say, we hurt the people. It's disgusting to me. So who else would want to hide hex from you? If you go on ethtrader.com on Reddit, hex is banned. Not allowed to talk about it. If you go on Bitcoin Reddit, Hex banned, along with everything else, but you're never going to hear about Hex on those two Reddits. If you go to our cryptocurrency, the only threads that you're allowed to hear about in Reddit are ones that are counter Hex or counter me, hateful threads only. You're not allowed to say anything positive about Hex at all, or you will literally just have your comments deleted and you'll be banned, which is crazy to me, because we won. You can't have higher uptime, you can't have better price performance, you can't have a better logo, you can't have a better brand name, you can't have a better .com, like we won on like every level that you could win and there's no pain in our chart because you know with all these other charts where people were able to short it and get liquidated and then their liquidation and their horror and the, the complete loss of their funds pushed the price higher, no one was able to short HEX. And so all of the pri positive price performance in HEX came just from people 
<laughs> participating and buying something that they believed in, and none of it came from people shorting and getting liquidated. Now, one day, if people want to get shorted and get liquidated, I'd love for them to be able to do it here, but there's nowhere to do that yet. You got another question? I got another question. Go ahead. Um, when you talk about how they might, how people might want to, you're talking about shorting systems and you sure. might want to game the pulse chain release, yeah. what, what would gaming that, that, that fork look like? Well, so when there's a fork, you have to choose where you're going to have your chips before the fork occurs. Mm. <clears throat> so you could have uh, Ethereum in your own wallet or you could have Ethereum wrapped and wrapped Ethereum, mm -hmm. or you could have your Ethereum in a liquidity pool. Mm -hmm. And then each one mm -hmm. of these plays has a different outcome. So if, you're, if your Ethereum is sitting in your own wallet, then it's gonna be treated as freemium, and you're gonna have to move it to a new address, or it's gonna be removed for me in 30 days. Well, you might be able to avoid that if you have it in a liquidity pool instead. But then, if it's in a liquidity pool, it might get harvested by the automated market maker fixer bot to check, fix the ratios. And then if you have it as wrapped Ethereum, not sure what happens with that yet. <laughs> like, well, if, if you were to give, uh, so what you mean when you say, for example, like, like spot give a week notice, except then you've got a week of people saying, oh, let's well, consolidate here and there. Well, there also, there, all, there also might be other edge cases that I just haven't thought of yet. Yeah. And so I don't want to commit to a specific date or time yeah. because I know if it's random and it's a range, yeah. that there's just less games that could be played. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just kind of a safety mechanism. Like if we, if we set a hard block or a hard time, mm -hmm. it, it would be consistent with what most sports did and it would probably be fine. Mm -hmm. But it's easier just to not lock myself into anything like that and, and leave there some flow. This question, this ha this whole situation with Pulse has brought up the idea of forking, and then n mo sorry, most people don't realize that chains are getting forked all the time. And well, I mean, not all the time, but it, mm -hmm. then I looked at Bit Binance, I didn't sure. even know that that was a fork originally, because I'm right. fairly new, right? You mean BSC, Smart Chain, you mean? Yeah, Smart Binance, yeah. Smart Chain. Sure. So I'm, I'm a fairly new, you know, right. maybe eight months in crypto, and yeah. only three in Hex, because I right. it was shit everything else, right? <laughs> and, uh, but it's interesting because when you find out, oh, these are actually forks of Ethereum that just, they were empty forks. Right, and there's a lot they, of- uh, yeah. there was other issues. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what doesn't work when you fork a chain. Well, most, most forks start out empty. And the problem with starting out with an empty fork is that there are tons and tons of empty blockchains. Mm -hmm. And what gives blockchains values is their users. And so if you want to have a valuable blockchain, you want to have a lot of users, and particularly users that are well-funded. So for instance, you know, why was Hex able to go up 10,000 fold in price before staking, mm. 20,000 fold with staking, with only 67,000 stakers? Mm. Because some of those stakers are wildly wealthy. Some of those stakers have hundreds of millions of dollars. And when you have a couple guys with hundreds of millions of dollars are really able to move the price. I mean, like if you, even if you look at Bitcoin's price movement, the majority of Bitcoin's price movement happens in 10 days spread across the year. And if you miss those 10 days, you actually lose money. So, so much of the price movement happens in sharp, strong bursts that, it, you know, you could say that's because it's the activity of large players. They want it now, and the price moves now, and everyone else has to chase it. I mean, the fun saying I like to say is if you, if you want to know where the bottom is, you just make the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have enough money, you can make the bottom. Yeah. And, and people just can't sell it, sell it down anymore. <coughs> So if you're, if you're a large enough player, you get to make tops, you get to make bottoms. Yeah. And if you want to predict the future, you, you can build the future, yeah. and then you'll know what the future looks like. Yeah. So I, think, I don't think the world needs more empty blockchains. We, we need more blockchains that are useful, that are near capacity, 60%, 70%, so the fees are still affordable. So eventually, Pulse Chain may also have high fees, and I think that will be okay if it makes everyone wildly wealthy mm -hmm. on the way there. Now we can work on layer two scaling. We can work on geographical sharding. We can, you know, do other things. But you also have a huge, a uh, larger block capacity. So the sure. chance that you're going to get these high prices is also it's lower. pretty far into the future. Isn't yeah, it? it should be several years into the future. We assume. Yeah. I mean, that is a guess. So, but it's. A, I mean, if you have to pay high fees, but you got wildly wealthy and now are able to pay the high fees, it's still a good deal for you. Yeah. It's not a good deal for the new guy that wants to get in, but for the people that are already in, it's a good deal for those guys. Any other questions back there? I feel like I've educated yeah. you all as so long well. As there's no questions, come on up. Come on up. But uh, I got a couple. Oh, you have a question. <laughs> <laughs>
hot. I gotta tell you, this jacket's super hot. <laughs> Wearing an actual piece of luggage is retarded. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering, you know, everybody knows the Feds of training 11. Yeah. And, uh, and probably continue to do it. Sure. Um, and that just postpones a huge crash and economic crisis and whatever you want to call that, just like you saw in, during the COVID dip where it was yeah. a perfect opportunity, but that yeah. really happened. Yeah. Um, but at some point, that might stop. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not never ending. How do you think the crypto market would react to a major crash and major, major economic cr well, economic crisis? Because you know it has never experienced something like that. And how do you think techs will react to that in contrast sure. to the rest of the crypto market? So we've seen, we saw, you know, when prices go up for everything, the stuff you hold has to go up higher than all the other stuff you want it. So if you have a stock portfolio and your stock portfolio doubled in price, but you want to buy a house and the house also doubled in price, you just treaded water. You didn't make money. You didn't lose money. Now you're, you're both of the things, the thing you had and the thing you want, they both went up double. You're basically where you started. Now maybe there's some tax considerations. You might actually be net negative. Um, but you get the idea. So just being ahead of the game, like right now with inflation at 5 to 30%, depending on who's measuring it, if you get a 5% raise, you lost money. You, you just, you now have a reduced quality of life because you only got a 5% raise. There's a lot of people that aren't getting any raises, let alone a 5% raise. So as long as cryptocurrency continues to do what it has done and is the highest and best appreciating asset that's ever existed, I think it's going to overperform in a bull market and I think it's gonna overperform in a bear market. Now. When I say overperform in a bear market, if the price of your cryptocurrency asset drops in half, but the price of a house drops by 66%, you did well. But it, you would have done more well if you were in cash. And so the question is, here's the problem with being in cash. What if you go to buy the dip? What if Bitcoin normally dips 85%, uh, but now it only dips 55% because the Fed's printing so much money? You can't even get normal dips anymore because the dollar is not worth as much. Did you just rebuy higher? I mean, there's. What if you don't get a retest of the old high? Here's something funny. I looked at the chart. The dip that we had down to 22 cents was exactly, exactly the previous top. Exactly. Which should, is technical analysis, like retesting a breakout is something that charts tend to do. So I thought that was funny. I like when Hex starts to like do normal chart things because it's kind of easier to predict what it might do. So I think, I think Hex is going to continue to overperform because when you have something that people buy, they don't sell, and they lock it up on average 5.8 years, what do you think is gonna happen to the price? And when more people are finding out about it, and it's, when it's, I have so much energy of people hiding it and suppressing it, when those gates open, and when the suppression ceases to work, you're gonna get a flourishing and a spreading of the idea. And we don't, the business model and the, the, the stuff that makes Hex great is never going to change. You know, Bitcoin was originally supposed to be partnering with money. Can't program it to wake you up in the morning. Bitcoin is supposed to be peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Absolutely no one uses it in peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. You don't want to wait an hour to six hours to get your transfer. You don't want to pay $20 to send it. And then, so now they fell on their third idea, and it's going to be digital gold. Maybe that one works. But they had to rotate a few times. Hex never has to rotate. It worked perfect from day one exactly as it was supposed to as a store value and accidentally has higher throughput and accidentally had lower fees for a long time. Now the fees are probably the same as Bitcoin's because Ethereum fees are so high. Um, and when Pulse Chain comes out, the fees will be way better than Bitcoin's and Ethereum's. And, and hexagons will benefit from that because you're going to get a copy of your liquid hex and your stakes on two chains. And then my gut feeling is maybe the Pulse Chain won't be more valuable, maybe just because people don't like getting beat up by those fees. But we have to see. We have to see what the market decides. I mean, maybe there's some whale that decides the ETH network hex is better. And then he just makes that one cost more. I don't know. We have to see what the market's going to do. So, so, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict exactly what prices are going to do. But if you're going to have to sit in some asset, I think the best performing asset in the world is an okay place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. My pleasure. Hi, Richard. Hey, there. I've um, been watching you for quite a few years. Nice. I'm just going to talk Pleasure to meet you. It's pretty nice here. It's, it's nice. Like uh, Everyone here is nice. Everyone speaks English. A lot of places you go, you know, Germany and 
France. They don't speak English, man. <laughs> I like English, and I'm a real fa big fan. You know? Good to hear. Yeah. So I have a three-part question. Sure. Quick one. Um, obviously, you're making this documentary. Looking forward to seeing what comes out of that, where it's going to be released. Yeah. Um, I assume that's part of slowly transitioning to a different marketing strategy from your side. You asked, you were being asked, how didn't I come to hear about Hexbook right. today? And you responded as we've seen, you're shilling yeah. on your own, yeah. on Twitter, on YouTube, having a community with you, obviously. But I, do you have any additional plans to do additional things like this documentary? Well, well here's the funny and part. Third, third part. Yeah. Third part. Go ahead. When Lex. When Lex? Yeah. What is Lex? Is that like a... Lex Friedman. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> He did, I, I, I gotta find an alternate method to communicate with him because like you stop responding to Twitter DMs, so they guys just have to email him. It's like a hassle. Um, it's not high on my list. Like I'd rather hire more devs than travel to America to meet Lex because I, I spent eighty hours driving a car and put five thousand kilometers on it in the last seven, eight, nine weeks, maybe maybe seven weeks. I think it's wildly time consuming. So if you put me on a trip in America. Can you imagine how much more of my time is going to get sucked up? Like, it, it will be it will be very hard to get back into the swing of doing the things to scale harder. So this is fun. I want to get my social right. I want to get this documentary thing going. Which, by the way, I don't have anything to do with this. I'm not paying for this. These guys do not work for me. I did not hire them. I did not meet them. They reached out to me. But you like them a lot. I like them. They're nice guys. They do good work. But like, this is their thing. Like, none of what they're building do I own. I have nothing to do with it. So. And the, and the other thing is like, so your, your question had this um, kind of presupposition that I'm running these big marketing campaigns or that I have something to do with like a shift in marketing direction. It's just not the case. The majority of Hex content is content that I do not make. The majority of Hex graphics that you see, I don't have anything to do with. I got Hex stickers in the car. I didn't make those. The guy just happened to bring them to an event. That's like, the community get show. Yeah. You're doing a lot of your own as well. How well I'm, I'm this doing trip. Right. I'm doing meetups, yeah. so I'm just meeting people that like Hex, but I mean it's a hundred people at a time maybe, you know. And that's are, when we're talking about YouTube, you're mentioning a lot of your metrics as well. Followers I would love to get more YouTube. girls in the game, yeah. Um, and I'm thinking, you've mentioned Lex a couple of times, he, he's very interested in crypto from his point of view. He needs to man up and do digital interviews like everyone else in yeah, the world and stop pretending that like the only way you can have a good meeting with someone is in person. And this is one example. It's silly. Like, As I had a great talk with Zuby, who's been on Rogan twice. I've got something lined up with Faris yeah. uh, Firas Sahabi. He's got, uh, he's going on Rogan. Yeah. And then as I do more Roganites, probably also end up with more of them. And it's just, we live in a digital world. First of all, some people think there's a pandemic. So maybe meeting up in person isn't the highest and best use of our time. And some people don't like polluting the environment. So maybe flying to another content continent to do a video isn't the best use of resources and it's just I have the best production quality in my studio I shoot 8k I stream 4k there's no reason not to do a live stream with me digitally for me to go in person it's like it's just a little stupid right like I've done every interview I've had has been great even with haters and it, it, we haven't been like oh I wish I did this in person you know like it's been fine digitally he should upgrade his lifestyle basically He's, he's hurting his business and he's having less impact on the world due to a dedication to a past long left behind. Like digital communication is awesome, it works great. He should upgrade his lifestyle and then we could have an interview today. I could leave here, we could go walk to my room and have an interview with him right now, but we'll see. And there um, are others, but thank you. Sure, there's other guys, my pleasure. So, so in summary, I, I do want to on-ramp uh, more girls and younger people and just all the demos that we're missing. But it's something that you guys in the community are going to have to work on, because what am I doing? Like, I, I have 100,000 followers. It's not that many. I, I, there's people that direct message me, like this guy from Swedish House Mafia messaged me out of the blue, and he's like, hey, I heard you wanted to do the collab. My friends all tell me I should get into this. He's got a million followers, you know? And there's other people that have messaged me with 500K, 600K, things like that. So if they go out and do the messaging well, it's going to have more impact than me, because all of my followers already know, and I have 10 times less followers. So. That's like a million new people compared to like 100,000 old people, right? Go ahead. Ah, Tim, my name. Um, Pleasure. Just a question about uh, how has Hex can, can um, onboard more people. You're a marketing Ads. guru. 
Buy ads. ads. Buy ads. Please <laughs> buy ads. <laughs> Simple. So, I mean, like, unique benefit <laughs> statement. What is the most important property that X has? The value increases, in my opinion. Everyone has a different thing. Some people care more about the environment. Okay. Some people care about the uptime. Okay. Some people care about self sovereignty. Cool. In my opinion, the thing people care the most about is getting rich. When you have the best performing asset in the world, you should brag about it. If it just also happens to have the best uptime, and it also happens to have the best logo, and it also happens to have the best brand name and the best community, and a pretty okay founder, you know, you might as well talk to people about it. You might as well advertise it. And so I think most of, how many of you guys got into hacks from someone that wasn't me? Did it? That's like half. I think that's half. So 40 to 50% of you guys are in Hex not because of me. And then you, as time goes on, are likely to bring on other people as well. And so it's the majority of new users will come to Hex through things that don't have anything to do with me. So it's better. Like, it scales better. And it's just like Bitcoin. Like, how many, how many people did Satoshi on ramp? Not many. Like, you know, he disappeared really quick. Like, he, he noped out, like, 2011. He was just gone. There was no more Satoshi. Worked out fine. Price went up 6.5 million X. It's not that bad. Made a new all-time high today. It's not that bad, you know? So, now we beat, now here's what's funny. I got into Bitcoin at 30. I used to mine it was 50 cents, but I pushed the price up to 30 and helped make that top. Went down to two. So my returns from $30 to 65,000 is about 2,000 X. Hex already did 10,000 X in two years instead of 10 years. So Hex has already outperformed my lifetime gains. It's a very, very, very early Bitcoin adopter. And that's without even including staking. So as far as price performance is gone, Hex has murdered Bitcoin, murdered it. I'm very excited to see what Pulse might do. Because Pulse chat room still has 10,000 extra members over the Hex chat room, and it's much less old. You know, the, the Hex chat room is maybe eight, ten times more old than the Pulse chat room, maybe five times more old. So, so, so would that be the recommendation for Pulse then to get out and advertise? Or? It's up to you. Really, you should do both. Because they're both small pitches. You want the world's best performing asset that's ever existed? Pre-viral? Hex.com. 40% APY, 37, depending on how you want to round it. And, uh, you know, 10,000 X price performance in 623 days. Short, strong pitch. That, that Hex.com brand name and the unique benefit statement is more important than the logo. If you're tight in space, get rid of the logo. 10,000 X, 40% APY, Hex.com. Minimum unique benefit statement. For Pulse, faster, cheaper, um, fee burning Ethereum fork. Because that only works for people that are already in crypto. If you're advertising people that aren't already in crypto, they're not going to know what fork means. They might not know what Ethereum is. So you might have to tell them, hey, you missed Hex. Fee Pulse is an opportunity to get in the ground floor or something else. But I don't know which one's going to. I do not know if Pulse is going to outperform Hex, if Hex is going to outperform Pulse. It's super hard to predict. I don't even know what the first trading. I know the first trading price will be zero. But then what will be the next price after zero? I don't know. I really have no idea what people are going to sell for or buy for. Um, the market will have to show us. Uh, so it's a great question. You asked the best question. How can you get more people on board? Outbound messaging, advertising, cold calling, emailing, signs, all that stuff, urinal signs, anywhere you can stick a sign. As long as you get that unique benefit statement in front of people, I think you'll have an impact. That's what I do. I mean, read my headline. You know, it's like you go to my Twitter and it's like uh, I raised 27 million for charity. It used to just say like the price in there, but I made so many people angry with it. I think they got immune to it. So then I rotate, like rotate the pitches every once in a while. So because because this thing has so many good traits that you really want to show it from every angle so that you get everyone involved. Because you want to save the environment, you should be here. You want to reduce pollution, you should be here. You want to make the world more efficient, you should be here. You want to remove government from currency and have less work, you should be here. You want to get rid of counterparty risk and having to beg for your own money? Here. You like privacy and pseudo anonymity and being able to do what you own, you want to do with your money without someone eyeballing you? Like, you know, you should be here. There's so many different reasons and angles why people should be in hex that you, you could actually rotate through them. Or if you know your audience better, you could you know, pick the right ones to start with. Great question, man. Thank you. Buy ads. <laughs> I have another quick question. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I've had enough. No, I, okay. The question was, as you were mentioning some of the price in Pulse, very interesting listening to the Pulse uh, radio app often. 
So you're, you're listening to the uh, the Telegram channel, the uh, voice yeah, channel. Yeah, but I'm actually listening to it when they do the when they put it on YouTube. It's I always thought it was funny me. the first time that happened. Yeah. I was like, ah, so this is all live stream now too. So it's yeah. like, there's all there's like sixty or seventy people talking in T.me slash yeah. Pulse Chain Com like all the time. Yeah, it's also interesting because like there's only maybe two or three talking in Hex, and so I. I don't know whether people just already understand Hex so well that there's so little to talk about. You're like, yeah. you buy it, the number goes up. It's, fa it's, it's fascinating, and I'm yeah. learning immense amounts, and, and it's basically made finance, crypto, super exciting. Uh, whereas uh, a year ago, it was like, whoa, it's too much, or right. don't understand, or yeah. now it's like, oh, I'm picking up on those little details. The rabbit hole goes deep. Yeah, it's deep, deep and it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what I want to mention is they were talking about how these liquidity pools, when they're copied, or, yeah. sorry, forked, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they actually, because of the ratio of the, the currencies in the liquidity pool, let's say, and he was using the example like, 100 USD to 200 sure. hex, it's yeah. giving you a 50 cent hex, or right. in that sense, right? Um, right? And I'm thinking that that is, so, so the liquidity pools are actually making the price. Yes. So yeah. in Uniswap, the price is literally just the ratio of the two uh, members yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure that same uh, truism holds for Uniswap V3 because mm -hmm. it has asymmetrical liquidity. Yeah. I, I don't think that that same mechanism holds for Uniswap V3. It does hold for Uniswap V2. Because mm. in Uniswap V3, you can add liquidity one-sided, and it's not going to affect mm. the price at all mm. because it's out of the money. Right, right. So in Uniswap V3, that uh, math doesn't hold anymore, but in Uniswap V2, it does. And I, I think that much of the liquidity on Pulse Chain is going to be Uniswap V2 based because Uniswap V3 isn't licensed for forking. Mm. They introduced a clause which gives them a two-year window for ex exclusivity. And that clause, you know, hasn't been two years since it's existed yet. And I also, I, I kind of like the way Uniswap V2 works. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's nice. Yeah. You know, I, I like the way Uniswap V1 works. Um, it's more gas efficient, but it just has the downside that you have to always route through one central pair. You can't have, like, ERC-20 to ERC-20 direct pairs. So you have to do, like, two routes. So mentioning that, could you tell us why is one inch been made illegal in the States? What's What's... It hasn't. We use it a lot. I mean, I would say in your. It, it hasn't been made illegal. No. But uh, lawyers sometimes want their clients to have less problems. Sometimes they want their clients to have more problems so they can bill more hours. Mm. But some lawyers they don't mind having less hours, but you having less problems. Mm. Those are probably the better lawyers. Uh, they probably had legal counsel advise them that mm. uh, their front end might not want to support certain activities. So, for instance, if you try and use Uniswap from Iran, it's GOIP blocked yeah. because the United States government has an embargo against Iran that means that no American business can do any type of facilitation of any commerce there. And then do you want to go to court to explain that just hosting an open source front end isn't the facilitation of commerce or you just want to kind of like skip that, right? And you don't know. It's, it's, it's probabilistic. You don't know whether you're going to be the guy that has to go fight yeah. the fight to decide whether this should be okay or not. Yeah. And so the lawyers probably just told them, don't do this, don't do that, and then you may you may never have to like fight any of these battles. But then a lot of people, they probably should. It would be a better world if people did fight those battles because what you get is called a chilling effect. And when the government can just use not even law, but the threat of law, the, the regulatory committees, the regulatory bodies to act as pseudo lawmakers, then it, it stops everyone from like having free speech. It stops everyone from living the way that they should be living, which is more free, um, because out of fear. And nobody wants to fight the fight. And yeah. because I mean, the federal government can be unfair. It is possible. Like, I don't know if you heard what happened with the Silk Road, but the FBI agents stole that guy's money. Yeah, is that they robbed the Silk Road guy? They stole and his Bitcoin. Then they had to find a way to make sure and they were going to leave the country well, and under right? it, yeah. fake IDs, and it was like, yeah. oh wow. The, Sometimes yeah. the FBI agents, uh, you know, yeah. and those guys can be corrupted sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, the, and in America, the FBI agents are the ones that keep the local police in, st in check yeah. usually. So it's... So deep. Crypt crypto is like the world's most effective honeypot because if you get that crypto, it's already like pre-anonymized for you almost. Yeah. Like it's, mm -hmm. uh, that's why you see a lot of hacks. I mean, mm -hmm. I post on Twitter all the time, people getting hacked left and right, left and right. Which is why we put security so important in X. We got two security audits, one economics audit, 
it took years to get it right. And all these other guys, they move fast and break things, and everybody loses all their money. And I post right in their thread, hex user not affected. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yeah, that's right. You guys could have been saved. I built the thing that could have saved you. But instead, you wanted to lose all your money. Hex user unaffected. I hit them with it. And, it, and then these guys are already, they're sad. They lost a lot of money. I feel for them. But I'm focused on the next people. Mm -hmm. that they're going to reload and re-victimize. Mm -hmm. So those same idiots that lost all their money. Oh, man. Some guy messaged me like a night or two ago. He buys something completely hard to do with and got scammed. And now you're complaining to me about it, letting me know. What do you want me to do for you? Like, if you poop your pants on the way home, you want to give me a call so I can try and help you out? How about you buy the things I built? My knees are going to give up if he can ask this question. Go, go. <laughs> Fire. Hello, Richard. I'm yep. Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Where are you from? I'm here from Copenhagen. And I work uh, for the Ministry of Finance and the <gasps> Oh, my God. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I'm here He's here to take it all from us. I'm here in a private matter. <laughs> Unfortunately, I guess. <laughs> so, I have a couple of questions. Um, First of all, uh, in regards to... It, it would be nice to have a functioning consensus network with people able to fix problems when they show up. Yeah. Because sometimes problems do show up. Mm -hmm. My answer to that is it maintains the Ethereum network. It's five guys. Yeah. yeah. And those guys, they don't get paid that much. And so as long as you've got like a core team of, of three to five guys that know what they're doing, then the code can be maintained. Yeah. Now, who pays those three, five guys? i got to tell you, they probably are sitting on big bags themselves. So they probably, even if no one was paying them, they may find it in their own best interest to protect their own investments anyway. And, and as I was mentioning earlier, we see people using the network without any assistance of mine. There's transactions going through that I don't have a front end that does that. <laughs> so someone's doing it, you know? So when you have, when you have the world's largest airdrop, a higher throughput, uh, less polluting, no pollution, pretty much, um, it attracts a lot of developers. So we've seen people that are launching uh, like accelerators to put other projects on there. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine a lot of those projects are going to suck. So I've got this dilemma where oh, you yeah. make progress in the world. Like you, you, you know, there's people that do getaways and Ford cars to, from their bank robberies, but we should all have Ford cars, right? Like we need yeah. good functioning consensus networks. So th the answer to your question is a little loaded in that I do not ever advertise that people expect profit from the work of others. And because of that, I would say that I'm paying people to maintain a thing, or okay. I would in the future. Okay. I so I would say if, some, if someone, I think that there's going to be enough people that are already wealthy and are likely to be wealthy from that project, it would be very, uh, so it would be very weird to me if a lot of people didn't have it in their own best interest to put their own time in to maintain it and you know, keep the golden goose yeah. popping out golden eggs. It is, it is, remember, it is more open source. So this code is open source licensed, and, and most of it must maintain open source because that is how it was originally issued. There's very few closed source things you could, that is how it was originally issued. There's very few closed source things you could inject. So when Ethereum gets upgraded as well, which it does from time to time, uh, do you want to take those good features? Depends. And, uh... It depends. Okay. So, like, you know, EIP-1559 yeah. doesn't apply to us because we don't have an issuance rate. So EIP-1559 for Ethereum changed the way miners are being rewarded <laughs> because they still dump the price to buy electricity and video cards and, okay. and ASICs. And, and in our system, there is no inflation. There is no block reward. There's a we wouldn't be able to adopt EIP-1559. It's, yeah. it's nonsensical. It's too different. The upstream Ethereum uh, chain has something that is those things as we want them, but some of them just won't be needed. So yeah. for me, I care most about getting users and then making the network better, and then getting users and not doing too much of one or the other. So you know, right now we don't have any throughput, we don't have any transactions. Let's get that done first, and then we'll worry about. Upgrades, you know. Yes, I agree. Um, I agree. Great questions, man. Can may I ask you? What uh, do you do? Anything cool at the? Um, it depends what you define as cool, okay. but I do APY uh, <laughs> integrations okay. and um, like different different. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad to, I'm glad to see you guys here. Yep. If we want to make the world a better place, we need to affect people in positions of power. I'm not saying they're in one.
But yeah. you may be one day, or you may have the ear of someone who has power, and there is technological progress happening here. All the currencies in the world are digital. Mm -hmm. Our currency just has a better known future issuance rate. That is useful for the world. Hex is the world's first currency that has a chart of future market supply. The world's first cryptocurrency with a chart of future market supply. That's very, very valuable. I haven't read the complete uh, economic audit yet. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, not. I was starting to read it now and I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to. That's hard. I'm not going to do this in 10 minutes. <laughs>[Speaker
Thank you so much, man. Yeah, no problem. You need to get some energy in here. Can we have some energy? <laughs> 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 Chuck my like ten thousand dollar stuff on the ground. It's just, like, it's just question, ground. It's not gonna fall apart, you know. Go ahead. Hello? My question is very short. So are you, sir. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> if I have ten thousand hex. Okay. How long time it take me to be rich? <laughs> well, it will actually make you feel rich. I can tell you as a person who's got a lot of numbers. I got a lot of numbers, and usually I don't feel rich. Usually, I really don't. I gotta tell you, man. Pick up the phone here. Call downstairs. No one answer. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you call from off site. You're like, hey, maybe they answer the remote phone. Call from the cell phone. They're not answering. Supposedly, five star hotel. I don't feel rich. Is it the same for everybody? It's the same for everybody. So if you want to truly, if you really truly want to feel wealthy, it's a state of mind. If you focus on what you have, you will feel wealthy. If you focus on what you do not have, you will feel poor. It doesn't matter how much you have. And the worst thing is, the more that you have, the more opportunity you miss. The more that you have, the more tax you pay. The more that you have, the more your friends steal from you. The more that you have, the more select the things you want are, you can't even get them. You get into a waiting list. Oh, you want the newest Ferrari? How many other Ferraris do you have with us, sir? Okay, well, we only have this allocation, and we're going to give those to those guys. And so you, you even have to pick a single brand. If you, don't, if you don't spend all your energy on a single brand and build a, a relationship with that authorized dealer, you won't have enough energy to, to get allocations for the other stuff you want. Is that way with watches? Is that way with cars? Just being rich isn't enough. And to tell you the truth, if you go out, you should come with me sometime to the bar. I like going to bars. I like meeting people. I like saying, hey, how's it going? You know, where are you from? All that. You, start, you bust out the I'm rich, they don't like it. I swear to God, they don't like it. You got to find artful, humble brag ways to be like, ah, you know, I was at the car dealer yesterday. Please ask me which dealer, please. Come on, come on, do it. <laughs> like, yeah. So if, if you want to, if you want to feel better, I, I wrote a book called Sci Vibe. Um, there's this, a whole chapter in there called the Spirit Chapter. You might like it. To tell you, I like your fashion sense. I like your posture. I think you've got good things going on in your life, just from what I see. I think you asked a leading question. I think you might already be rich, and you just put in like point oh 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 one percent of your stack to see what this tech stuff is about. I could, I could, I could more directly answer your question in a non-emotional way, which is. Historically, the hex price has doubled every like 47 or 61 days or something. I don't know if it keeps continuing to do that, but I know that we're very, very early. And I was very early in Bitcoin, and we have a much better heart head start than they do. You know, the best time to buy Bitcoin was when there was no liquidity. Satoshi owned all the coins. There was no place to buy it. Everyone thought it was a scam. That was the best time to buy Bitcoin. And then you see a lot of that similar stuff here, and you're like, hey. That's the best time to buy. And people think that that's like bad. You're like, no, no, that's perfect. Like, we, everything is going great. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, um, Thank you. It's my pleasure. Hundred, but, but I, I try. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good question. <laughs> Who's got another question? Hey there. How's it I'm going? Richard. Oh, we are doing fine. Nice. Uh, I would like to be anonymous because of our tax system, which is <laughs> <laughs> amazingly crazy. And nobody knows how many coins I have either. And it's crazy. Now, because of the questions I'm going to ask, I, I will start with asking you... Uh, For a friend. I, are, you, <laughs> are you allowed to carry a gun here in Denmark? <laughs> I, don't th I don't think you're allowed to carry a gun here. Most of the EU is deprive their citizens of uh, concealed carry or even open carry unless you are licensed as a, a trained security guard or a money transporter or actual law enforcement. So, but also that's the reason you don't have so many shootings. In America, we have a lot of shootings because everyone's allowed to carry a gun, and so they do. And yeah. they get into arguments or they drink too much. And then they are like, Wild West time. I mean, when I lived in Florida, I would carry all the time. I had a concealed permit. And you know, it's funny because it weighs down one side of your belt. So if you got your your, sh your, uh, your holster here, now your pants are this way, and they're like, maybe I should carry some extra clips here to like weight that side down, you know? And then you're like, cry, like I don't know, I used to do uh, scenario shooting, where you learn to get behind cover to reload, you know? You learn how to, you don't bring your weapon up like this, you bring your weapon up and then out, you know? And then 
shoot symmetrical. There's all the stuff they teach you. But then when you're actually in the moment, like you get a jam, you start clearing it. And they're like, why don't you clear that behind cover? Like, why are you just going to get shot at while you're doing that, you know? But now, but in Europe, you don't have to do all that stuff. You know how hot a bulletproof vest is in Florida? Oh, my <laughs> God. It's so hot. Like, it's, bulletproof vests are stupid hot. So I, if you can live in countries where you don't have to carry and wear a vest and, and the vests don't even stop stab, you know, like knives and swords, they go right through the vest. Like it's just Florida man things. These are things you only have to know about in Florida. <laughs> but let's take Las Vegas, right? Let's take Las Vegas. There was a guy that had 20 machine guns in a hotel room, 20 stories up. He just started unloading them into a, rock, uh, into a country music concert. What are you going to do? First, you're not allowed to carry at the concert because you're drinking there. You're not allowed to bring the weapons where drinking's at. So even if you had a concealed permit, you weren't allowed to carry there. But let's say you had your weapon. And now, are you, have you practiced to shoot 20 stories up? Well, I looked this up. It turns out that when you're shooting an inclination, you actually have to undershoot, not overshoot. So you have to aim lower than you normally would. And let me tell you, at that distance with a handgun, you're never hitting nothing but his neighbors. <laughs> You're killing everyone else wondering what the loud noises are. You're definitely not hitting the guy with the machine guns. So the only, the, in that situation, no amount of training, no amount of concealed carry is going to allow you to respond to a guy emptying 20 machine guns with 100 round clips and, and tack two, you know, triggers and bump triggers. There's just, there's no solution to it. So you're really just having less crazy people with less people figured out how to reduce gun deaths, which is sad. Now, I will give that government be more likely to stay unevil is valuable to the rest of the world. So those American deaths that we have every year, it makes Canada and Mexico and the rest of the world a little bit safer. And so there is a little bit of upside, but it is a very high price to pay. There's also some other hidden things in there, like a lot of those deaths in the 35,000 are people killing themselves. When you're 20, the most likely thing to kill you is you. People don't realize that. So if you want to reduce those gun deaths, the best way to do that might be with better mental health counseling. And you know they would have found another way if it wasn't the gun a lot of times. Particularly the guys. The guys try and kill themselves, they get dead. Girls that try and kill themselves, they have nothing good. Guys try and kill themselves, they get dead quick. Go ahead. So, your answer is you are not armed. I'm not armed. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he asking? I don't know. I, like, I feel like I'm being led into the slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels then like a trap. Right. To Go look out the window. <laughs> then Still we get me. to uh, the question itself. Uh, how high do you think hex uh, will ever uh, come? I, I think, so, I mean, this is, kind of, you asked the right question now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at the chart, and I see that it just goes up and to the right, yeah. but it's not curving down. It's going up and to the right, and then curving up as well. Yeah. And then I look at the rate at which we're acquiring new users, yeah. the rate is increasing. So, we're not, it's not like we're creating, a li we're, we're, we're not on-ramping a linear number of new users. We're creating more new users every day. And then I, I start to see these hints of virality. Guy with a million followers messaged me out of the blue on Instagram, brand new account. Never heard of this guy in my life. People are messaging me here about, hey, this rich guy just most wants to meet you, this rich guy wants to meet you, this Arab dude, blah, 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 blah. All this big money, big money stuff. And these are the people that are able to move the bar far and also create new social opportunity. So I see, I see a lot of virality kicking in. I see a price chart curving up and to the right. The dips are getting smaller and less long. And I don't know how we could do any better. I mean, it would be great to have fiat on ramps, but it's not our thing. Like, I didn't build a fiat on ramp. I built hex. Yeah. So you could just see the chart do something truly unbelievable. And, and just, you could, like, I feel so weird saying this. You could see million dollar hex, and then you'd be like, but that's more than the gross domestic product of the planet. It doesn't make sense. And you're like, yeah, I know. It doesn't make sense. So we shouldn't use market cap anymore, but... That's just what the price did. Like, the price can do, and think about it this way, it's even crazier than that. If you're, if you're on-ramping users exponentially, and the price is an exponential as well, I mean, we, we did 10,000X on 60,000 stakers. That's nothing, man. Like, 60,000 stakes is nothing, absolutely nothing. This event that we had right here, in a year or two, this could be 100 times the people. Yeah. Realistic. Hex reach a price of ten dollars yep. for one hex, yep. then this will be three times as much as all crypto there all together sure. today. Yep. And if it goes in fifty dollars yep. a piece, it will be yep. fifteen times yep. 
all grouped sure. all together, yeah. which uh, is equivalent to uh, eight times the altogether yeah. budget of the United States, right. which is the world's biggest economy. If you want to feel better about those numbers, <laughs> I'll give you tricks. I'll give you tricks if you want to feel better about those numbers. Try and sell that much. Price goes yeah. down. You're, you're so it self balances. So like, so you yeah. you end up with an insane number, and then you're like, yeah, yeah but yeah. not everyone can sell. There's a lot locked, and then no, it leaves no. you with like only a little. True. They could they could sell now, and yeah. then if they did sell, they'd have to take a little haircut. Then the numbers get a lot more realistic. Yeah. But they're still the best ever seen in the world. Like True. I just I don't know of what event would have to occur to stop the chart from doing what it's been doing. And if I can't, okay. if I truthfully can't come up with something to make that chart stop doing that, I know where the chart points. And that's, you know, like, if you can't invalidate that chart, that's just what it's gonna do. I mean, look at Bitcoin. If I told you 10 years ago, hey, Bitcoin's gonna be 65,000 per. But, oh, by the way, here's one for free. It's 50 cents. When I was mining, there were 50 cents. If I told you that it would go from 50 cents to $65,000 each, you'd be like, you're crazy. It doesn't make sense, it's a trillion dollars. There's no way Bitcoin would go a trillion dollars. Well, now it's like 1.3, so. <laughs> like. This, we are in the highest appreciating asset class in the world, and we are in the best version of all these assets. Like, so I, I believe that it can do numbers that feel weird saying them. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. Richard, I, I'm a master of science. Nice. That's my education. You get a good tan for a science master. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think we are both uh, geniuses. Nice, thanks, man. <laughs> they give you that virtual well, high Welcome to the club. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And Richard. Now, everything I have worked for all my life is staked in hex. So, would you have a job for me? <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something funny. People are trying to volunteer. Oh. They're literally like, hey, I have all the money I ever wanted. Yeah. I have only free time now. Yeah. I want to work with you. What what can we do together? Yeah. And I'm like, oh crap, because I want to to like I know this dude from the beginning. You know, like he was in the very beginning, smart guy, and uh, I want to give him something to do. So now I'm thinking, like, I don't know, maybe maybe helps on the exchange thing. Like I haven't answered that message yet, but I've received numerous. I've received some like guys ain't made it yet. They need some money. Can you have a job stuff? And then I've had some. We've totally made it. What can I do to help? You know, make X. Yeah. So any of you guys that have skills and you feel like donating your time, hit me with a message and I'll feel bad about it for a while and hopefully I come up with a way to, to harness the energy. Because we are working on the world's best stuff. Like th this is the world's best stuff. Cryptocurrency and longevity technology, there ain't nothing better. I like girls too. Okay. Three, <laughs> three best things. But you can help with a first two. Richard, yeah. thank you a My lot pleasure, for, man. for everything thank you, you do for us. And I'm not going to take uh, the honor for what I know about it. Right. I've seen somebody on ramp you. Charlie with the t-shirt. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> you brought us a good one. I like him. Thanks, thank <laughs> thanks, Charlie. Nice. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, man. Sure. We're all going to have one of these awesome. before the end of the night, by the way, guys. Can we do selfies and do a selfie with everybody? Nice. You're in the right place. See you, man. Someone asked back there, was that an NFT? It's <laughs> a physical NFT. Um, How come you yeah. chose... Meetups in Europe and not USA? Well, I mean, I live in Europe, so this was just easier for me to get to. Yeah, most people don't know that, but like, I live in Europe. Always so. thought you were in the States. Yeah, you haven't Which disclosed Which serves me well. I don't yeah. want anyone to know where I live, because what are they going to do? What's more likely? They're sending gifts or they're sending fake SWAT team? Like, oh, there's a hostage situation at Richard's house. Yeah. yeah. Please send help, which in America they do all the time. So there's a guy named Jameson Lopp. Got swatted a bunch of times, had to change everything, had to move, right? So in the States, you get swatted, they're dropping flashbangs on your dog, and like, you're wrecked, and there's nothing you can do about it.
In Europe, it's more chill, I think. Like, I don't, I don't think swatting's a big deal here. But if no one knows where you live, you don't have these problems. So I just choose to not have the swatting experience, basically. Um, now, at some point, I may become uh, so famous at one point that, like, everyone will know where I live, but then I'll also just live more than one place anyway. But so. don't, don't you also be the most loved at the same time? Well, that's the thing, is, like, when I come to these events, I really meet a lot of people that I feel connected to, mm. and I think we have similar interests, similar beliefs, and I, and I even feel respect. So I think that if someone tried to do me harm here, you guys might have my back. Of course. We have your back, Richard. If someone tried to get me here, would you guys help? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. And, you know, we've only met uh, people that really love the product and, and liked me. Mm -hmm. We've never actually had uh, a hater show up at these things, because... Mm -hmm. uh, they were too smart for that. They might know. start, but they leave a... They leave a, 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 a yeah, the large screen. hexagon squad. Like, hey, the largest hexagon is the prep place. Um, <laughs> who else has a question? I feel bad not wearing my overpriced jacket. I've cooled on out now. Oh, no, leave it off. We like t-shirts. so hot. I have, to, I have to sport this thing. I have a question. Go ahead. Come to the question thing. We have another one waiting here. The question queue. Oh, I'm very sorry. Because they got video pointed at that thing, you know? Is there any late hexagons? Late hexagons. Yeah. I think that a lot of people, so historically what happens is people hate buying dips. They love buying things they know their friends got rich on. So when do their friends feel rich and start buying expensive things? When the price goes up. And so when do their friends buy in? When the price goes up. And then when do the dips happen? Right after those guys get in. So <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as everyone knew the big payday was going to happen, and they were going to get 30% more coins for being staked a single day, a ton of people got in right before big payday, expecting the price to go up. And so what did the price do? Because everyone got in right before, it went down because everyone got in right before. And so these, these buy the rumors, sell the news events are very common in all speculative industries, and cryptocurrency is not immune to that. The top in 2017, or the end of 2017 for Bitcoin was when the CME launch happened. Everyone had their eyes on that specific day. The top for Bitcoin in this cycle, which had just, I guess, made a new top, so it was a local top, but it lasted six months. Is the, I called it on the day. I said, this is a top. So Bitcoin went from $65,000 down to $30,000. I think it might even went 29.5, 28, something like that, depending on what exchange you're on. And so it dropped 55% from that day. And how did I know it was that day? Because it fell out of the parabola and everyone had their eyes on a single day. It was the easiest call ever. But it didn't go down the 85 like it normally did. It only went down 55 and now it went up again. But because it went up again, I don't know if it could do a double top. This could, it could just be a temporary higher high, and it could go make a new low and make everyone very sad. Because, it could, I mean, it couldn't even make a new high on the day the ETF launched. That's a little funky. If you have an ETF launch, what we've been waiting for in Bitcoin for 10 years, we've been waiting for an ETF, like, please bring that legacy money here, and you finally get one, you can't even make an all-time high on that day. You're just shy of it. A little weird. Like, it feels limp to me. You know, it's, it's not a strong price move. It's not impulsive. And it, it, impulsive, strong price move is what I would want to see with the best news I think you could get for Bitcoin. Like, that's it. Like, like, what is the other good news that you would hope for? That was the dream. That was the best news you could ever possibly get for Bitcoin was ETF. And they got it. And the price, tiny, maybe, little, itsy, bitsy, made a little bit of a newer high. It seems weak to me. So I'm, I would be very fearful uh, on ramping to Bitcoin. Still, you know, I feel... Even even if Bitcoin drops 85% like it used to, and it does its fractal like it used to, and you feel more confident what it's going to do, who cares? Ethereum outperforms at 3 to 1 anyway. Hex outperformed at 400 to 1, or no, 1,400 to 1 anyway. So even, even, you know, I'm in this habit of understanding the Bitcoin chart, which is just like for fun, for laughs. I'm not trading it. I don't care. You know, it's just for laughs. Like there's so much money everywhere else that I don't really care what Bitcoin's doing. You know, it's just as useful as it is getting a hashtag. It's useful as getting notoriety for it. It's just like Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff probably doesn't care about Bitcoin at all. But he wants people to see his stupid name so he can sell him a stupid investment product. And so he just talks about it. And it's just sad that he keeps getting airtime. Like, you've been wrong for 10 years. Be quiet. No more airtime for you. Let's bring a new wrong guy. That old, that wrong guy's beat up. So to, to answer your question, I think that you on-ramp tons of people when the price is higher. Like, just by the way, if you look at my follower count, you go to socialblade.com and you see when I got all my followers and Roger Ver got all his followers, Back then, the majority of all our followers came in the last two months of 2017 when the price was going up vertically. So we on ramp most of our users socially, and, and a lot of uh, people bought in at those times. So by, by 
number of new users, I think you on-ramp new users when the price is higher, and then that causes dips and shakes people out. People that buy the top and sell the bottom end up giving their money to people that buy the bottom and sell the top. But if you have a longer time preference, you make money. No one that's ever held Bitcoin for more than three years has ever lost money. Never. And no one that's ever held hex for more than a year, or even six months, I think, has ever lost money, ever, no matter what you did. It's never been down for six months. Like, I think, I think we maybe had like a 184-day period where it didn't make a new all-time high, maybe. And that's it. I would have one more question. Go ahead. Um, Please do. Let's do photos after the question. Sure. And, and yeah. of course, this other lady is also waiting to ask. Please, let's get the lady. Yeah, and also, then I, I, I knew you would say that, Richard, but, you know, it's kind of... Well, yeah, she's been yeah, there for a while. I would like to ask about the T-shirt. Sure. Can you explain about that? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> she asked a hard one. Yeah, sure. Get as many as possible. So this, yeah. this is, so T-shirts is actually super easy to understand. You have a company. The company has owners, okay? How do they divide up ownership? Shares. What's a share? It's like a, a dollar is made of 100 pennies. So what's a dollar? It's 100 shares in pennies of a dollar. This is a way to divide stuff up. That's it. If you own more shares, you get a larger portion of the pie. If you own less shares, you get a smaller portion of the pie, just like company stock. So in Hex, the revenue to the staker class comes in three forms. Inflation, which is the vast majority of the revenue, so that the entire currency can inflate at a maximum of 3.69%, and the only people that get that are the stakers. So if you were, so if there was a, if there was 100 billion hex, I think there's like 660 billion, but for math, let's just say there's 100 billion hex, and you were the only staker, it was just you, you could mint yourself 3.69% of 100 billion, which would be 3.69 billion every year. You could do that, and you'd be the only staker, and you get it all. But you're not the only staker. Why? Because everybody wants a piece of that. And so everybody stakes. And when people stake, they make shares. And those shares just divide up that pie amongst them. So they're dividing up the 3.69% inflation of the whole thing and the penalty income from people emergency end staking and late end staking. And those are actually two small components. The vast majority of revenue is the inflation revenue. The, the revenue from the emergency end stakes it's nice, it's a little taste, it's tasty, but it's, it's maybe 5% as large as the, the revenue from the inflation. So yes, we, we do get outsized returns when people emergency end stake, and they enrich the staker class by doing that, um, but the majority of the revenue is the, the inflation. So now what happens if more people stake? It's not just you. So now you don't get your 3.7 billion a year in this virtual like 100 billion supply. Well, then you just divide it up by how many shares you have. Okay, well, how do you tell how many shares you get? Well, you lock your hex. If you lock longer, you get more bonus shares. That's it. So if you start with more hex, you get more shares than other people. Or if you lock longer, you get more bonus shares. And it just divides up the profit. And how it links with what they said that now that the price drops, so you mine more, even you don't even know it. Well. I think what they might be trying to say is that if people emergency end stake during a price dip, it destroys their shares and makes it so that you have a larger percentage of the shares that are left. And so you get paid extra hex because they're no long, their shares got destroyed and they paid an er emergency end stake fee. And so it's a self-balancing system. If lots and lots of people stake, the APY comes down. But if everyone staked, probably the price comes up because it reduced the supply. Then, if few people stake, the APY shoots up, and then it entices people to stake more. So it's an auto-balancing system. Yeah. So basically, like the, the answer to shares is, it's just, how you it's just how shares work and anything else. It's just how you divide up who's going to get the profit. Except we have a time bonus for longer pays better. That's it. And bigger pays better a little bit. Bigger pays better is a much smaller number. You can get the 3x the shares with longer pays better. But with bigger pays better, you can only get up to 10% more shares. So, you know, 200% bonus shares is a lot more than only 10% bonus shares. I hope that answers it. If you Google it, there's a there's a blog called like hexacon.blog or hexacons.blog, something like that. It's got some good walkthroughs on, on how T-shares work. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Good. Yeah. First of all, awesome to meet you. My pleasure. I was curious about your uh, more uh, philosophical view. Sure. Uh, where do you see, like, is the, the 
the end goal? Global domination. <laughs> <laughs> For it. <laughs> totally vertically integrated. You never have to look at another cryptocurrency. You process your transactions with Pulse Chain. You on ramp through some exchange, uh, a Hexagon or Pulsican or, or some other awesome guy founds. We don't okay. know who it might be yet, but hopefully someone does. And then, uh, you know, Hex is your store of value. And then you restake and peel off what you want to be rich. And it becomes, it just keeps sucking all the liquidity out of the world until we monetize time and delaying gratification. And, you know, the numbers become quite insane. That's the idea. Uh, and it's doable because it's a better design than Bitcoin. It's a better brand than Bitcoin. It's a better name than Bitcoin. It's a better community than Bitcoin. It's better game theory than Bitcoin. It's better price performance. It's a better price chart. It's better uptime. It's vastly superior in every way that I can think of except liquidity. And by the way, that liquidity is the same reason the price don't go up much because okay. it's too much for sale. So I, I, I will be happier once we have surpassed Bitcoin in the last one or two remaining things it has left to surpass. Feel good about that. Will that stimulate? Um, uh, uh, will that help everyone? Well, it'll, it'll help most of the people that participated, but the people that didn't participate may be jealous. So for them, they may have feelings of angst or feeling left out or Romo regret of missing out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> I'm up here screaming about it for a couple of years. If you couldn't find the time to listen, now you have to watch us be rich. Sorry. No. Sure. Okay. Pat, you got another question? Oh, right. Yeah, I, no. have question. I didn't want to cut you short. Did you have something else? It was just a uh, general, yeah. like, uh, because I'm thinking, like, if the tide rises, it will... Uh... It does. It is true. So, look, people, I, I said that Bitcoin would go back to 10,000 bucks because I thought I was collateral. Yeah. It didn't. It made a new all-time high. I also said, look, the chart could do something different. It ain't done before. So it did that. Fine. It only dropped 55 instead of 85. Okay. It's doing new stuff. Cool. I'm happy to learn from it. Am I getting liquidated? No. Is anybody that I advise getting liquidated? No. Are we opening up shorts? No. That's when there's no money in that. So we're doing all the stuff where there's money in. You know what there's a lot of money in? People selling their very expensive Bitcoin for Hex. The more valuable Ethereum is, the more valuable Bitcoin is, the more money Hex gets because those are the guys that were on-ramping. They sell those bags to buy this. So I, I love to see the Ethereum price higher. I love to see the Bitcoin price higher, the Bitcoin price higher because it makes Hex price do better. That when they sell their Bitcoin and Ethereum to buy Hex, it's better when they get a lot more dollars because it makes the hex price move up. So I, I, it's funny, I try and tell people what the chart has done and why it may be likely to do it. I called the top on the day. That top was profit. That top call was profitable for six whole months. You could have sold, you could have closed your position in profit. Not that I would ever advise you to be short, but if you were dumb and did it anyway, you're in profit for six months from the day. No drawdown whatsoever. That's perfect, that's beautiful. You can't ask for better performance than that. Like that's legendary, right? And it, like, so, I, I think we're very lucky that Bitcoin and Ethereum are, well, Ethereum hasn't made a new high yet. It's, it went up to, I think, 4,000 today, where its previous high was 4,400. Bitcoin did make a new high, I think, at 66, where its previous uh, high of 188 days ago was uh, 65. 65, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a very weak, higher high, like a day after the ETF. But hey, you know what? I hope it keeps going up. We all make more money. Quick last. Just, go ahead, uh, go ahead. I don't have a million followers, but no. I have 17,000. Good. Up for an interview. Probably. Okay. Probably. <laughs> Depends on if they're real followers or not. I gotta look how many comments you get. All right. You gotta see what your actual engagement looks like. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank man. you. <laughs> Go. Yeah, one last question. Yeah. Um, so, I've, um, let's say, told many friends about Hex for yeah. a long time. Yep. Yeah. And I think people are naturally hesitant sure. to crypto, some kind of crypto project that they've yeah. never heard about. Sure. And then they look at charts and the Hex chart goes up and down. <laughs> yes. Right? True. But what I have basically, and what has amazed me personally the most during all this time of, of Hex is actually how you develop the game theory. Behind it's good it. stuff. Especially the emergency outbreak. Yep. Because um, when you said in one or the other um, video, you said volatility up, emergency outbreak. Yep. So people are going to cash in. Yep. Volatility down, yep. emergency outbreak. <laughs> And what I personally like almost the most yeah. is like the like the people that lose their code yeah. or go to heaven, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Like they're slowly being fluted out yes. again to the sacred. Yeah. So and people that get what hacked. actually caught the people the most talking about hex yeah. when, when I tried to explain it right. was this game theory and 
the design of it, which was just incredible. You must so have smart friends. If you, if you could, um, if you could explain a little bit. How well, I mean, look, I used every trick in the book, right? I was like, I looked at legacy finance, and I said, what type of design patterns is legacy finance using to be profitable? Well, if you if you don't end your CD when you're supposed to, they re-roll you at a worse rate. Okay, well, there's a dark pattern. Okay, if you uh, try and pull your money out early, they penalize you. Okay, there's a dark pattern. Okay, now what's the problem with those dark patterns? They just benefit the bank, not the users. But in our system, it benefits the people that did what they said they were going to do. That's wholesome. So if you did what you said you're going to do, you're going to be benefited by people that lied about what they were going to do. Sounds fair to me. And so in our system, you get to be the Fed and print yourself new inflation out of thin air. You get to be the bank and profit from other people's bad decisions. You get to be uh, the person that mints your own rewards in charge of your own finances. No one else in the world can do it for you. There's so many awesome things that are in this that don't exist anywhere else in the world. I mean, maybe some of these components exist a little bit in, in like mining, but in mining, you gotta beg the mining pool to let you join. You gotta beg the mining hardware manufacturer to send your hardware at an okay time. You gotta beg the electricity company to sell you electricity at an okay rate. There's a lot of begging going on. And, and those guys tend to lose money. So, and there's huge negative externalities. They're blowing up the environment. They're just nuking it. I know, it, look, I used to mine Bitcoin. I know what my electric bill, I love what my electric bill looked like before and after the mining. It was way higher after. So, you know, there's the best game theory, the best logo, an okay founder, the best price performance, the best price chart, the gatekeeping, which keeps the price lower for better entry now, the the forty percent APY, ten thousand x price performance. That's a very tight, very short, unique benefit statement. Hard to beat that. There's just so the, even the imagery, the hex, the hexagon is the most futuristic, the most futuristic shape. You look at any futuristic movie, it's covered in hexagons. So, all of these things combine into what I believe is a perfect storm for price appreciation. I really truly believe that hex is very early in its price performance. And I think if you were impressed with a million percent, 10,000 X, you'll be really impressed with a hundred million percent. So, you want to do photos? Photos! Take photos! Yeah. Up, here. Do up here, up here. You, you just know where I'm I have a question. Paper, right? Right? I'll take one. Go ahead. Uh, so, why does the state text disappear from circulation? Uh, well, it doesn't really. So, if you go to etherscan.io, it's no longer counted as ERC20. Uh, supply, but it is instead measured in something called allocated supply. Okay. So if you click read contract and read the allocated supply, it's there. Okay. So it's not, it hasn't really disappeared, it's just moved into the allocated supply counter instead of the ERC20 total supply counter. It was a design decision. We could have done it the other way, um, but we, we chose that way. My pleasure. How's the stream? You want to cut the stream? No, I don't want to cut the stream. <laughs> Come on, you want a photo? Come on up. Come on up. Send me in a picture. And we're going to have a group photo? or Whatever, whatever you I'll want. I'll take a solo picture. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, let's do a group one first. Yeah. Where, can we fit here? We can't all fit here. Uh, outside. Okay, outside. so here's what we'll do. We're going to do solo pictures first because we have OK light here. Then we'll be a two. OK, what are you saying? Come on. Wonderful light. Thank Absolutely. you. A little light on the film, but wonderful. <laughs> and uh, and then we'll do a group photo outside, and then maybe we'll rev the Ferrari engine a little bit, depending on where you get this. How's that sound, everybody? Yeah. Sounds good? Great. First cup, first serve. I'm going to zip up my jacket so I can <laughs> <laughs> Is this the camera? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Did you turn out okay? Hey there, how are you? Hi. This is one of our few female Mexicans. Let's protect her. Oh. Oh, alright. Professor. Hey, how are you? 
Guessing who's the real camera. Thank you so much. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Let me guess. That was your man. Damn it. And Mr. Biceps. What's up, Biceps? How's it going? Big bear, big biceps. <laughs> Good stuff, Keep them coming. And does somebody want to take a photo? Who's next? Yeah. Oh. Hey there. Good question, man. <laughs> you? This yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure, man. Father and son. Nice. Come on in. Come on in. I like the shoes. Thank you, bro. I love the shoes. You know what? I'm an elevator girl on shit shoes. <laughs> Yeah, keep them coming. What's up? What's up? Gucci inspired shirt, man. Yes. Mike here. Yes. Yeah. This one? Yeah. All right. Good. Cool. Thanks, man. My pleasure, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Nice uh, little roller you got there. Yeah. Is it? I can't tell. No, it's not. Psycho. Inspired. inspired. Hey, yeah. How are you? This one? Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I can stand it. The friend that's supposed to come with the shirt, but we could never make it. Joker. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Who's next? Come on, everybody. Let's do it. Yes. All right, keep coming. Who wants pictures? Let's go. Free pictures with the founder here. Woo! Or his. Which one is it? This one is. Oh, 
Through this, so we can get the group photo. Pleasure to meet you. And you do. Where are you from? Uh, UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here for a while. So yeah. I was going to drink the drink. Look at this. Come on in. Come on in. I have no idea how that's going to go. Dude, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, like business in Africa. Yeah, I don't know. Right? You got it. 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 Give me a favor, man. Oh, yeah, this is still the point we got some. Yeah. 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 There you go. You gotta get to it. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. 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 It's uh, probably easier than starting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wouldn't even think about it. That's good, man. That's good. Can I do it? What? We're gonna do it wrong. Okay, go. Sorry for the delay. Everyone is getting an individual picture with me, no matter what. Grab my. Wow. I will stay here until everyone gets it, even if the photo dies. Yeah. Who's next? Anybody else? Oh yeah, we are. We're all waiting. Who's next? High heels. It's your turn. Do you want one? Come on in. This one, you? My pleasure. My pleasure. Anybody else? Come on in. Watch the camera. This one's you, this one? You got a tall young one here. There we go. Is that the breeder? Seven or I don't can know. make new hex kits. Okay. Whatever the most. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a, yeah, Jacob. Turn out good. Astronomy Insulin. Uh, uh, yeah. It's like yeah. 350. Yeah, the angle's you terrible. You get it in the US, but yeah. Don't pay reason. I don't have it. Yeah. And it, it did overheat, and we tried it. Okay. How many people watching? Now, about 11. 11 on the wow. I think the peak was. Is he? Well, actually, was there. Yeah. 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 No, no, you didn't. It wasn't yeah. too much higher. Thanks. There we go. My side was good. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Great and good. I'm extremely proud. Well done. I like that mic. I got the same mic. Yeah, we're safe. Just please work with you. Anybody else? Singles. Single photos. If not, we're going to go do a group photo right now. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. All right, let's look numerous. Everyone. We look more formidable. I'll put on my overly hot jacket. Yeah. Where? Are we going out to the courtyard or something? I guess, yeah. It might be good just in the lobby. Well, hey. Patrick, you got this covered? And what should I do with this stuff? Wherever Patrick, the man with the expensive camera is, we go. We follow him. Richard, yes. can I bring this up? You can try. We'll bring it out or up? You can try and bring it with you to the photo shoot. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck, buddy. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Yeah. It might not work, but you can try. All right. Oh, you want to have it? You dig it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I'll bring it up. You, you need it. That's very good. Google, Google. Google. Fair use. Nice to meet you. It is already there, sure. but there is fair use. Check in. You Yeah, 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 no, somebody was going to introduce you to somebody. My name is Morten Haugen. Oh, yeah. Haugen? Yeah. You, yeah. Added, you added me on Twitter today. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm EU investor. Oh, all right. I don't know, I don't know why. Nice. It was like yeah. something in regards to the event. Here. Did this event, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just you connecting with microphone. people. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. Can we do uh, photos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm collecting for the Pulse Chain yeah. GG. I love your 
Thank you very much. Right, thank you. See you later. See you around. Don't forget it. <laughs> you know what? I, I still chill, hang around, and uh, still do things so I have high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this battery lasted so long. I guess uh, it's a good battery or an efficient device, this thing. Oh. So I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get the rest of my tripod kit out of there and clear it out. And then uh, I'm going to come back down. If anybody wants to see the Ferrari, you can see it. Uh, and then there's a couple guys in the chat. Cool. So give me uh, 10, 15 minutes. I'll be back in this area. And then I'll take you to the parking lot. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you want to still watch. Uh, not much more happening other than I guess he's going to rev the engine, put the Ferrari. Let me know if you have any questions I can ask him.
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he wants, but let's see. Is it raining outside? It was when I came here. Typical Danish. Yeah, it seems so. We've been here three days. And, yeah. And this is what you get. <laughs> uh, you, you, got, you know if you're going to Norway or Sweden? No, it's a big land. No. I, I, I am probably leaving on Friday. Okay. I gotta have a final meeting. Uh. Home, but I might come back. But Richard, I don't think it's a big land. Right. Yeah, cool. It's really uh, a couple days ahead. <laughs> I gotta see what's up there. Cool, man. Have you been in Hex for a while? Uh, only, no, not really. I've been into crypto for a while. I'm fully new in Hex. Yeah. Like a month, too? Yeah, like six, seven weeks. Uh, I want somebody to explain to me Pulse Chain. I like, completely missed that period. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not the expert, but the best, my best shot of it is just a duplicate of a. Uh, the copy, the copy thing, as I understand, for yeah. some reason I ignored all the Twitter messages yeah. about sacrificing Pulse Chain, all that crap. Uh, I missed it completely. Yeah. So now it's like deep into the, like the pre-sale. Yeah. Do I wait until main launch or do I get it now? Because it seems like somebody right. told me it's super inflated at this point. Exactly. My, uh, so my friend who gained the, uh, and became a, he's in, been into Hex uh, for. Uh, I, I've had it. I've, one, held, I've held it for uh, now. Twelve months. Okay. He told me to wait. So I'm not sacrificing Pulse. I'm, I'm going to sit there on day one. And yeah, just... because probably the people who sacrifice on day one are probably up so much they might sell on the launch. Yeah. Yeah, I'll wait. Where are you from? I live in, I've lived in New York for my whole life, but now I moved to... De to so I pretty much live in Denmark six months out of the year. Oh. My I'll... girlfriend lives in Hellerup. In? Hellerup. Okay. Are you Danish? No, I'm Norwegian. I ah, grew okay. from Norway. Oh, yeah. so I'm, my girlfriend lives in Copenhagen. Ah, North okay. Copenhagen. Nice. So you came here for the for this? Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. took like a quick flight? Uh, no, I drove. Uh, so Go. probably like yeah. I drove all day. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I'm driving by tomorrow. Just gonna get my bag in. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, that's my Twitter. And then there's two, I actually have two YouTube channels. Yeah, that's me. Okay, okay. Yeah, connect guys, it'll be. And uh, yeah, feel free to come to Norway and uh, yeah, hang out. 
Yeah, and also the, lately I've been doing like microdosing and stuff, so I'm into oh, that as well. Right. Yeah. Ayahuasca? Uh, no, shrooms, like uh, psilocybin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't microdose ay ayahuasca. That no, 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 but yeah. maybe you, if you're into that, maybe you're into that too. A lot of my, yeah, a lot of my friends are. I haven't done the ceremony, so... Uh, yeah, let's bring it to you. Yeah. 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 All right. I mean, it's a miracle it works at all. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I watched the other stream and I was, after the whole thing, I was just, in, you know, still watching and I was like, yeah, yeah. where's the Ferrari though? <laughs> Oh really? Love it, yeah. Around the loose if you want. Oh. From one side to the other side and then ended up in Pakistan. Ah. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> slippery because it's rear-wheel drive 612 horsepower so you're on traction control all the time yeah yeah I can imagine if you turn the traction control off you're you're slipping around like there fun you go. like fun Richard I have a question for you yeah Stream audio. Oh, really? The stream that we're doing right now. Because I guess I left it playing on my YouTube and my phone. That's funny. Uh, so it's the cheapest Ferrari you can get. Really? And you can put people in the back and it has a trunk. Huh. And it's the best looking Ferrari, too. So. Yeah, man. You're welcome, uh, Ferrari. I just shilled you for free. <laughs> Don't expect it again. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, there's a company that makes a, uh, a body for a Lamborghini. That maybe wants to make a hex car, which is funny. Wow. <laughs> but it's based on a on a Lamborghini uh, Aventador, uh -huh. so maybe the little... across the country. No, no, you're, you're not. 